always ask questions. And I recently started giving out um, dark chocolate. So I have five chocolate bars and I have five questions. So I'm actually collaborating with a chocolatier next month. Um, we are going to be talking about how dark chocolate has mood boosting um, properties. It's very beneficial for perimenopausal women. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. Okay. So my first question is, does anybody know what perimenopause is? Michelle. It is the time before menopause. Yes, and do you, so do you want to go a little bit more into that? Or? Uh, I think. So okay. it's when you may be experiencing menopause symptoms, uh -huh. but you have not completely stopped your flow yet. Right. Here you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You. So perimenopause is when the ovaries begin to make less hormones. Um, it's when, uh, so it's a lot more than what people think it is. It's a lot more than just weight gain, irregular periods and hot flashes. So hormones are the remote control to your body. So anything can happen. They, it creates like a shift. And so it's, so it's more than uh, hot flashes. So it could be like mood changes. So nervousness, anxiety, um, interrupted sleep, insomnia, brain fog. So you might feel like you have dementia, um, dry skin, acne, hair loss, um, night sweats, fatigue. You might feel like you don't want to do anything. And some women even get nosebleeds. So there's actually like different hormonal scenarios, what I call them, because a lot of people think it's just low progesterone and low estrogen. And that's not the case. And that's why symptoms are so different for everybody. So it can be low progesterone, low estrogen, low progesterone and high estrogen. And some women, they have so much testosterone and androgens that they lose hair. Okay. So there's a lot more going on that you can't feel or see. So with that said, my second question is, what's the number one killer in women? Raise your hand. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe you'll get the next question. <laughs> what was, what was, what was heart disease. It's heart disease because of the changes that are going on. You can't see or feel your cholesterol going up. You can't see or feel your cells becoming resistant to insulin. And then we also have osteoporosis. You can't feel or see your bone calcium dropping. And there's a lot more to it as well. So does anybody know what age perimenopause can start? Maybe later in the 30s? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so average age for perimenopause to start is 40s, but it can be seen as young as 30s, 35. And honestly, like people get so confused when I tell them my target audience is women in their 30s and 40s, not their 50s and 60s. And unfortunately, it's one of the reasons why a lot of women don't know they're in perimenopause, as well as medical gaslighting. Does anybody know what medical gaslighting is? <laughs> Courtney? Yes. Um, it's when doctors, you go into the doctor's office and the doctor tells you there's nothing wrong with you and you're like, no, but sir, something is wrong yeah. with me. And they send you on your way. Yes. There's soy in here. Is that okay? Courtney? Courtney? There's soy in here. Is that okay? I'll give it Okay. All right. Yeah, so... Unfortunately, women are most likely to experience medical gaslighting, and then black women are at the top for experiencing medical gaslighting. So I'm actually going to read some comments from Instagram that I took snapshots of. So yesterday, I visited my OBGYN for perimenopause symptoms. She looked at me like I was an idiot for complaining about all my weird symptoms I was having and suggested I should take antidepressants. I went to my general doc and she said I might need Zoloft to help me with my hormone issues as I age. Talk about feeling unseen and unheard. And then the other one that I took a snapshot of is I was told my menopausal symptoms were psychological and I was too young to be experiencing them at 36 years old. So the support is very minimal, minimal and it's a little scary. So why are pres pres providers prescribing antidepressants to manage hormone changes? That's just an open-ended question, isn't it? Like, <laughs> right or wrong? Anybody want to guess? Is it because it's like a universal way of treating it? 
like men mm -hmm. and women, not just, you know? It's like the knowledge that we know based off of treating and doing tests on men. So we're, mm -hmm. you know, we're using these pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. as a way to treat both men and women, mm -hmm. even though we're fundamentally different. Probably. Yeah. I, I honestly, yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't know. Um, so it's, like it's kind of a blanket thing. I mean, they just prescribe for antidepressants right. for everything these days. Yeah. yeah. So I was. Well, the issue you have they don't, know. they don't know. Oh, you're not happy. Right. So there you go. They don't know what to do. So yeah. where's Michelle at? We should just eat more mushrooms. <laughs> 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 I, I know. I, I wanted the first answer. That's what I was going. <laughs> so. I was on a call with a potential client the other day and she was so confused like why she couldn't get help for like eight years she was experiencing hormonal changes and so I said to her I said I know this sounds crazy but did you go to the doctor when you were going through puberty it's not medical so hormonal changes aren't considered medical so providers don't know what to do unless they honestly go out of their way to learn about it and so here's the biggest thing about perimenopause is you don't know what you're going to experience until you enter it okay and so I always say like you want to go into perimenopause at optimal health because if you're not things are going to be very rocky and bumpy for you so I always say on social media don't go onto the freeway with your check engine light on during rush hour take a private jet with a personal attendant me <laughs> so not only do I educate my clients about hormonal changes that they might experience and why they're happening but I help them improve or eliminate their symptoms and get their body and mind to optimal health to thrive in perimenopause and beyond. So our body needs ingredients to function and we get those ingredients from the foods that we eat. When we experience symptoms of any kind, anything that's going on, our bodies are trying to tell us something. So clients that work with me, they leave feeling confident, happy, and they're thriving. So I'm Vanessa Dyer, registered dietitian, super nerd and perimenopause coach. My business is Menopause Prep. Are you ready for menopause? Yeah. Yeah. So, be before I get into questions, uh, Dr. Breton and I were doing a, um, an event on Wednesday, February 7th at 6, and we're going to be talking about how a compromised spine can make your perimenopausal symptoms worse because you can have spine issues and not know it because 10% of nerves only feel pain, right? Yeah, because 10% of nerves only feel pain. So we're going to be talking about that at um, where you work. <laughs> yeah, um, it's located at Neuroplasticity St. Pete. Oh, this is yeah. microphone, thank you. Hey, everybody. Um, we're going to be at Neuroplasticity St. Pete, uh, February 7th, like mm -hmm. Vanessa was saying. It's going to be at 6 p.m. Um, we're located on MLK North and 23rd mm -hmm. Avenue North. So feel free to stop by and hear more about perimenopause prep from the nutrition and chiropractic <laughs> perspective. So. Uh -huh. And it's free. Right? Yeah, yep. it's free. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about questions. anything? Questions, anybody? Anyone? 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 Uh, what does optimal health mean? So optimal health is listening to your body, uh, giving your body what it needs and what it's asking for. So it's where you're not experiencing um, like symptoms and where you're getting your body ready and like prepared for menopause, because menopause is a one-time event. It's actually where you do not have a menstrual cycle 12 months in a row. But women can still experience hormonal changes at that time. Um, you, and it's also significantly reducing our risk of osteoporosis, of type two diabetes, of heart disease. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. So you were saying that hormones aren't seen as medical, right? Right. So what about the endocrine system? Do like mm -hmm. doctors have to get like trained specifically in the endocrine system to speak hormone? Or um, so I'm talking more about like uh, the sex hormones. Okay. So like, yeah, because there are endocrinologists. Right. Yeah. But I'm talking more of like the sex hormones and how they affect us. Because um, a lot of women, unfortunately, are miserable because they're not getting the help that they need because it's not seen as a medical issue. Although it does affect us medically, like cholesterol, blood pressure. So you would think, but it, no, it's, it's not. Wow. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? She sounds like she knows a lot of things about things. <laughs> Just nutrition and body, the body. Don't ask me where anything is because I don't know. <laughs> 
So what do you like to eat? What do I like to eat? What's your, what's your, uh, what's your nutrition plan for yourself? Well, okay, so um, that's a good question. So I eat for my body and like what my body is asking for. So there is no like one diet fits all. Like everyone's needs are different. And I always say like everyone's portion sizes are different. Cause my sister thinks I eat like an athlete. I don't, some people see, look at what I eat and they're like, oh my God, is that all you're eating? I'm like, I'm, I'm good with this. So I mean, Monday, through, I have a very specific way of eating like Monday through Friday. I don't eat gluten cause I have a gluten sensitivity. Unfortunately, I eat um, low carb, high protein, um, a lot of veggies, um, more veggies and fruit, just water, kombucha, tea. And the weekends I have like two, three cheat meals and they'll enjoy my gluten cause it's delicious. <laughs> I don't like coffee. Oh, okay. um, at night I'll, I'll have like um, some green tea before I go to bed, but that's uh, yeah, really I'm it. I'm Colombian, I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> like I try to take breaks, but. Yeah. Um, it's hard to take a break from coffee, isn't it? It is so good. I do so much, I get so much done, too. <laughs> <laughs> coffee doesn't do that for me. See, because I have, I have ADHD, so it actually does the opposite for me, which is very strange, and people, no, it makes me sleepy. I've met other people like that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes me sleepy, so if I want to sleep, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. So you'll drink a coffee to relax. Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, green tea to relax. Yep. That sounds like my grandma. <laughs> Andy, do you have your hand raised? Yeah, I'm curious about popcorn. I don't see there's any being served tonight. But... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is That's it, Andy. Is it inherently unhealthy or is there such a thing as healthy popcorn? So I don't, well, actually don't like the word healthy because it's a very subjective word mm -hmm. and that word means something different to everybody. So mm -hmm. I just say like nutrient dense and like eat for you and like, different to everybody. If I asked everybody in this room, that we'll get a completely different answer. So it's not bad to eat popcorn every single night? <laughs> I mean, it depends on how, honestly, it depends on like what's on it, how much you're eating, just popcorn. if you're okay. Popcorn. Yeah, that's fine. Like if you're eating like, I mean, it depends on, it depends on what else you're eating throughout the day, to be honest. So, boom. Yeah. And it's probably different for everyone, right? Yeah. That's, that's the one thing like, Early on, as an athletic trainer, we were taught nutrition, but when I started working one-on-one -on -one with people, they started asking me questions, and I started realizing how different every yeah. human being is. Uh -huh. And you're like, you know what, there's people for this, and I ain't it. <laughs> so, I send them to you. <laughs> so. But so, okay, so you don't like the word healthy. Do you like the word unhealthy? Do you use that? <laughs> Not really, either. Um, but honestly, like, so the other, the other reason I don't like the word healthy is because I feel like sometimes it creates this sense false of reality because I worked for I worked with pregnant women for five years and I would never forget it's actually the day I realized I'm like I don't like this word um, I had a pregnant teenager I think she was 14 and she her diet consists of soda candy chips and then a dinner meal and so I'm talking to her about her eating habits she said well the doctor said my baby and I are healthy and I was like mm. and this is like when I first became a dietitian I'm like okay what do I say and so I just put it I just kind of made her think about like the future and I said well think about like your health in the future and what that looks like and how, what you're eating now and how that affects your life and your your baby when they become like a teenager and I just kind of like I said to her I was like I was like you know why I wear glasses because my mom didn't eat enough carrots <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, I got her thinking, and the next time we spoke, she's like, "Oh, Miss Vanessa, I I got a fruit. I bought some fruit at Aldi." I was like, "Oh, yay!" Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's another reason why, because it creates like a, a false, a false sense of reality for some people. Right. Yeah. Well, it's the most mm -hmm. powerful drug ever invented. Sugar and food and like yeah. things mm -hmm. that kill us faster. Yeah. It's all like yeah. it keeps us alive in the right situation, but we eat way too much of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a lot of a lot of stuff sure. added to it, all the chemicals and the processes to keep the bugs mm -hmm. off it to grow faster because the soil sucks. Because there yeah. needs to be more what? Well, so mushrooms. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? Um, did you guys, uh, did you guys uh, run this bit? <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you guys. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you.